and I have the pleasure of sitting at this piano with one of the legendary piano players of our current times, and also someone that you probably know better as the man behind your favorite rap beats that are all over the radio. It's Beethoven. Hey, 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 what's going on? What a treat. I never thought I would be in this position. That's so what, um, what were you just playing? The song I was playing is a, uh, is a song called Lord, I'm Available to You. It's just something I remember playing for my mom when she used to sing solos back in church years, years ago when I first started. So it was one of the first songs I learned. And it's like, you know, I always, when people ask me to play something, that's something that always come to mind for me to play. What age were you when you started playing piano? I was around seven or eight, about seven or eight. Started off playing the drums in church, then I moved over to the keyboard and piano. And did you always love music, or were you one of those kids that had to be dragged kicking and screaming for the lesson? I think I always loved music, even though I had to be in church all the time. You know, when you're in church, you're looking for something to do, because as a kid, you, you need something to do to keep you, you know, keep you interested. So, um, yeah, the, the music is something I was drawn to. Yeah, you're lucky. I just had to sit in Sunday school to <laughs> my ass. <laughs> so at what point did you decide to start making beats? That must have come way later. I started to make beats um, maybe around my teenage years, but it was just for fun. Like when I started getting keyboards where you can start, you know, playing, making little beats on them and stuff like that. So, you know, it was just for fun. So that's when I started kind of making beats, but I didn't really get into really making beats to probably about 18. When mm. you were a teenager, what, like if I would ask you back then, mm. maybe when you were like 16, 17, like mm. what your favorite rap songs were, what your favorite beats that other people had made were, what would you have said? At that age, I was in love with everything that was coming out. I wasn't even, I wasn't allowed to listen to music with, you know, with cuss words in it. So I had to sneak and listen to, you know, the Chronic album, a Snoop Dogg album, you know, things like that. So, but I was such a fan of music and it was just doing something to me. Like, I was like, I had to have it. I had to listen to it. So I was listening from, from Snoop Dogg to Tupac to Method Man and Red Man to Busta Rhymes to, you know, to Jay-Z to, to all the R&B guys that came out. I was listening. I remember Soul For Real at that time. I remember the time when, you know, No Limits started coming in with Master P and Mystical and then Cash. It's like, I was just, a, I, if you, I bought a CD book and it had every CD you can ever name. I was going to start get every CD that came out, from gospel to R&B to rap. So you were really digesting all this different music Definitely. and in your mind kind of processing like how different people the layout. You probably weren't totally aware. I, that I wasn't even aware. I was just doing it because I just liked music so much. I wasn't even thinking about producing at that time. I just, you know, I was just a fan of music. And did you always, like from your first beats that you were making, were you always incorporating your piano playing? Or did it kind of take you a while to fuse this one part of your life, which is like church and instrumentation, with this other part of your life? Well, when I first started making beats, all I knew how to do was play the piano. So all my beats just sounded like, you know, just a piano with some drums on it. And at the time, people that wanted to rap over the beats, they were listening to me like, well, how am I supposed to rap to that, man? It just sounded like some church music on top of a beat. <laughs> so that's when I had to kind of learn and say, okay, I can't play all the music I know. I got to kind of just find other ways of just making beats that just sound good where people can rap to them. So. What was the first beat that you made where you felt like you really nailed it? Like you finally got to this point where it, I don't know, where if Zaytoven was expressed on the beat? Uh, the first beat I made, well, that, you know, to the, to the world, it would be so icy. Now for me, it was a, a it was a beat that I did for a, a guy named San Quinn. It was in San Francisco. He was a big artist, you know, from where we was from. Yeah, for, yeah. yeah. Right. And it was like, in the, in the song was called, it's like dope. And that beat to me, it just almost defined me. I remember just being so proud of that. 
and having a song with him, you know, just for the neighborhood, it just it was big for me. So that was the first beat that made me feel like, okay, I can make beats. I'm proud of that, you know. But you know, to the world, so icy was the was my jump off beat. I was proud of that also. You know, I was very proud. Like that's probably still one of my favorite beats that I was just proud of. Like man, I did something that was special. Yeah, it's sick. Mm -hmm. And I mean, most of the world probably first came across you from all your work with Gucci Mane. Yeah. And you guys have had a long history of being friends and making some amazing hits together, like over 10 years. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the first time you ever met in person. Me and Gucci? Yeah. Uh, I was a new kid that came to Atlanta from, you know, California. And I had a little, you know, studio set up in my mom's basement. So. You know, while, I, while I'm at, at home, I'm, I'm making beats and doing songs. I'm recording my little brother, my cousin, or just guys around the neighborhood. It's just for fun. We're not trying to make it in the music industry or nothing like that. But Gucci was a friend of one of the guys that was over. So he ended up coming over one time, and he had his little nephew. Like, man, I want to get a beat for my little nephew, you know? And he was rapping the song to me, so I made a beat for, you know, his nephew. And that's just like, you know, that's how we first met. He wasn't into music. He wasn't trying to, you know, make a song or nothing like that. He was just trying to get me to uh, make a beat for his nephew. So that was our first initial meet. So were you the one that talked him into rapping, or he eventually came around on his own? I think it was a little bit of both. I think he, I, I think in his heart he already wanted to do it. Uh, I think he was kind of trying to dibble and dab with it. but. I had the place, you know, where you can come and record and, and make songs for real. And so I think, you know, once once we started seeing enough of each other and I was hearing the song that he was writing for his nephew, I was like, dang, you just sound, you know, you sound good. And I, I just remember that, you know, I don't even know what time it was, but, you know, he ended up getting the booth. And it was like after that, it's just every day it's almost like, hey, man, I'm going to come over today. I'm going to do some, you know, let's do some more songs. And it turned into that being, you know, an everyday routine where it's just like, okay, me and him just doing songs every day. And I put my focus on him. I was working with a lot of guys, the other guys that was around from the neighborhood and all that. But he caught my attention. He sparked my interest where it's like, okay, whenever he want to come over and make some music, I'm going to wake up, do whatever I got to do to make sure we do some music together. What was your mom's reaction when you started making rap? Was she like, why are all these, <laughs> like, I don't know. She's I had to sneak people, I had to kind of almost sneak people in the house and make it like, are we not doing the music, just my homie that's coming over type deal. Now, I will say, you know, my mom started being kind of receptive of it after a while. She seen, you know, what I was trying to do and, you know, I wasn't really causing, causing any problems, so she was kind of receptive of it. Now, my dad, you know, my dad was in the military, so he looking like, hey, man, this ain't no studio. I don't been out here. You know, he'll he'll come down and turn all the music off in the middle of me doing something. So, <laughs> so you know, it took a while. I think it took me having my first was so icy when I was able to come home with like twenty five thousand dollars. You know, for making that beat. I, you know, it's when I first got paid for the beat. And I, you know, I go up to to my mom and dad like, here, I want y'all to help me count this, make sure everything is is you know the right money. I think that's when they kind of looked at it different, like, okay, wait a minute. This is something we ain't never even planned up. I didn't even plan for it. And so, you know, and I think we kind of just learned together what was going on. So it went from, don't bring nobody over here, this ain't a studio, to, Zay, do you need me to buy some snacks for you downstairs for your people that's coming over, so. Yeah, it's funny yeah. how your parents just think that yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you're not really working a job, and then all of a sudden you're like, hey, hey. this yeah, yeah. I'm not asking you for money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, I, I was thinking about how many beats you've made. I mean, you're working on beats all day long. You mm -hmm. said that you and Future alone have hundreds of beats that mm -hmm. are unreleased. And I was wondering, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that are young producers themselves that would love some advice from Beethoven. Mm -hmm. One thing I was wondering is just how you organize it all. Like, are you sitting there with folders that say Amigos, Future? whatever, make a beat, drag that in there. Like, how do you keep everything? Well, I, I don't really make beats for an artist. I really just make beats for myself. And the way I do it is, it's like, say the last beats I made the other day, or well, it's still April, right? So it's, I make an April folder for 2017. So all the beats I made in April 
will go in that folder. Next month, I'm starting a new folder. And all the beats I make next month, they're going in that folder. Now, you know, I can't, it's so many beats I can't really keep up with. I know as I make them, I send them to the artists that I think sound, will sound good on them. Now, they might come up with a song to them, they might not do nothing to them. But that's what keeps me making beats all the time is because, okay, well, maybe the last batch of beats I did, they wasn't feeling as much. I got to keep working, you know, to, till I get another hit. And, and that's just the way I, uh, I treat this music. You know, I'm always hungry for the next big record. You know, the next song that's going to make people be like, man, this ain't told the truth. And the only way I'm going to get that is by just doing music over and over and over again. I might make a hundred beats, and only out of that hundred, one of the songs was big or was, you know, was great. And so it was worth me doing those 99 beats that I can, I can throw them in the trash now and start all over, because it was worth it. So that's the way I treat the music. I don't try to keep up with what I did years and years ago. I just try to, you know, I gotta keep making. Keep going yeah, keep going forward. Yeah, I think that's smart. Um, what, give me one other piece of advice you would have for young producers starting out. Young producers, I would definitely say that try to find your own sound or be creative and come with something that's new and unheard of. Because I think we're in a time right now where a lot of music is getting swept under the rug because it's just mimicking something else. So, it, you know, it can't be great because it's like we didn't heard this before. You know, we didn't heard this music before. So uh, I think, and that's what the game is missing now. A lot of people now that's coming in the game say, I want to sound like Zayto. I want to sound like, you know, this guy. And they're going to make the same music that we're making, but we still making this music. So, you know, you got to kind of come in with something different and creative. And I think what helps people do that is an artist. What helped me cultivate my sound and create my sound was finding a guy like Gucci Man. Because now I'm not just making beats that's, that's pleasing to me, but I got to please him. So, you know, I got to make beats that kind of what I like, but then he got to like it too. And that kind of helped create a sound. So I always encourage young producers, find you an artist that you believe in, you think that's good. And then, you know, y'all build chemistry together. All the greats, all the great producers have an artist that they, was, that they were great with. You got Timlin Missy, you got, you know, Puff and Biggie, you got Snoop and Dre, you know, you got, you know, those, those are the chemistries that, you know, I think that brings new energy to the game, so I always True. suggest that. How have you seen your, how have you seen Gucci evolve over time, his style, or go deeper into his style, since you were, like, there from the beginning of his career, mm -hmm. and how do you think your style has progressed along with his? Like, what was it like in the beginning compared to now? What's so crazy is, uh, I think we both have progressed uh, a whole lot. But I think even in, in our progression, we all always try to chase the first thing that we created. Like, you know, now, like, if you listen to my music, a lot of my new songs, like, it's a song uh, I just did called Used to This. It just went platinum, you know, just the other day. And you hear, the, you hear the music in it. You hear the drum patterns. It doesn't sound like that's not a regular Zaytoven beat. Or if you hear a song like Too Much Sauce that I did, I produced, that's not the Zaytoven that came and, you know, started in the game, which is, you know, I like to be able to, you know, be broader and, and show my different skills of, of making beats. But at the same time, I just released a song called East Atlanta Day featuring Gucci Mane and 21 Savage. And that's like, I love that more than I love, you know, me playing a whole lot. It's cause it just, it's, it's the sound that we created. It's something that I came in the game with. It's a sound that I'm known for. So, you know, Gucci as an artist, he didn't, I think he wanted to be, to me, one of the best rappers out now. He, didn't, he wasn't no great rapper when we first started. He was just, he was funny and he knew how to, put phrases together real good. But, you know, even now, I feel like I like it when he rapping phrases, you know, more than I like him just rapping real good. And that's just, I think that's just because, you know, I'm in love with what we created and the world loves that. That's what they love us for. They love us for creating that. So, you know, I definitely want to keep that 
you know, a part of our music, you know, even going forward. Yeah, for real, Asia yeah. Atlanta Bay. Yeah, right yeah. <laughs> Do you want to tell me a little bit about how that song came about? Like, why is it called Asia Atlanta Bay? How, when did you make that beat? Whatever you want to tell me about it. Uh, every time I work with Gucci, man, and we do songs together, it's always on the spot. It's never beats that I didn't send him and he recorded to, or you know, or he got ideas or we I had an idea for him. It's just, okay, he right here in the studio, I'm right here in the studio, let me start making the beat, you start writing the song. And that's just how the you know the song came about. He was in Atlanta, he called me over, like, Zay, I'm at the crib, you'll come work with, you know, work at the crib. I'm like, cool, I'm on the way. So once we there, we ain't even gotta talk long. It's like, all right, Zay, let's let's crank up. So I'm gonna start making a beat. And I know with Gucci, you know, he's he's like he like I am. We impatient. So I'm not gonna. Sp I can't spend a long time on making a beat or try to make something extravagant and great. I just gotta go off the feeling. Cause as soon as I start making the beat, he about he finished with you know his first verse in the hook. He ready to go record it. And you know he came in with uh, East Atlanta Day. And once he started saying that, it just you know I was like. Okay, this is the old. This is the high I be chasing. You know, this is the high I'm chasing. Like, I wanted. That's the Zay. That's the original Zay told the Gucci sound. So that's when I I felt like you know what, I need this song for me. You know, this is this is the sound I, I need for you know the project I'm doing. The project I'm doing is called Trap Holla Zay, and I need that original, thorough, authentic sound. And that's pretty much just how it came about. Yeah, I think it's as strong that you're. Uh, it would really be coming to an era where producers are now known and credited on the tracks in a way that they weren't 10 yeah, years ago. Yeah. But you've really taken it a step further and put out entire releases under your name yeah, with yeah. other people on mm -hmm. it. And I think that's yeah. super strong. And it's not like, oh, I just got all these people with like banger Bang, tracks. Yeah, that's what I asked. Um, yeah. Speaking of like crazy beats that aren't what I, what one would expect from Zaytoven the beat that you did on mm. Future's Layup. Layup, yeah. I thought was really crazy. Can you tell me a little bit about that track? Uh, those tracks, that track came from just me being in the studio making beats. It's trying to meet a, quart a quota, really. Like, every month I try to make at least 50 beats. So my folder, my January folder, my February folder, at least got to have 50 beats I made, whether I feel like making beats or not. And layup is one of those beats of was you know I'm just trying to meet my quota. I'm just trying to make a lot of beats, but with just different sounds and different flavors, uh, you know, to make this 50 beats uh, this month. And of course, out of this 50, it's gonna be five to ten. It's like hold on, that's that's special, or this one right here is special. So, uh, and that's what layup was. It was just out of out of the batch of beats. Like when I was doing beast mode with Future. He was, say, he was telling me, Zay, you pick whatever beats you want me to rap on. Like, you know, this beast mode, I want you to be the guy to tell me, I might like this beat, but you might want me to rap on this beat. So I'm gonna rap on the beats you want me to rap on. And the layer beat was definitely one that's like, okay, I want you to rap on this beat, you gotta rap on this one, you gotta rap on this one. And to me, layer might have been my favorite one off of the, <laughs> off of the, you know, the whole project. It just, it just had a certain bounce to it a certain hop to it that, you know, I yeah. feel like Future could do, yeah. It's got like those like Disney, it's got, there's something like real twisted, twisted Disney yeah, yeah. strings on there that I really, really love. Mm -hmm. um, so you're playing a show for us on May 18th. Mm -hmm. You and Gucci will be doing a lot of your biggest hits in a piano bar rendition, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, which will be a really interesting way to hear them. Um, how did you guys go about preparing for that show? I know you did, you did a bit of that before on NPR. Like, mm -hmm. how did you sit down and figure out how you're gonna do that? Anything that me and Gucci do is never just thought out or just planned, you know, real deeply. We always just go off of, you know, how we feel and it's, it's sporadic. So, you know, when we, even when we did the M NPR, we never did that before. This is the first time us just trying it, right? You know, we trying it right here live on camera. <laughs> So, you know, I think we, you know, we use that as in to say, okay, that was special what we did. So let's continue, let's, you know, let's just practice on doing that too. So, cause I feel like that's a concert that nobody else is doing. There's no other producer 
rapper combination that can do that right now. Not that's, you know, in our time era right now. So, you know, I think that makes us special. So, you know, all we did was just kind of pick out the song that we think would be dope doing it like that. And, you know, we sit down and, and I play, I play on top of the music. We just turn the music down. He rapping with a different swagger. I add the piano riffs on it and, and there you go. You had the show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm. Well, Zaytoven, thank you so much for talking to me. As always, a complete pleasure, and look forward to seeing your show um, in a little bit. Um, um, maybe you can take us out with a song of your choice. <sighs> take it back to church. <laughs>